So let's look at part two, why the course exists. Okay, so let's look at the very, very big, big picture. We have the engineering profession, which includes the engineers and the companies that employ them. Engineering, of course, the body of knowledge has a very tight connection to science. We all know that physics is the foundation of mechanical engineering. You have chemistry for chemical engineering. Electricity and the element of physics, etc., are all connected to engineering. You have the engineering disciplines. You have the profession itself. You learn in societies. You have the employers. And then engineering itself links to technology. And what is technology? Technology is artifacts. It's our infrastructure, aircraft, roads, ships, it's artifacts, physical things. And technology impacts society, so it has social implications. It has cultural impact, shapes society, has done. And it has political, economic, and above all, it impacts the quality of life. So, a cr the role of the engineer when he moves this way deals more with what we would call the soft issues, the people issues, societal issues. When we move this way, we deal with the sciences, engineering sciences. We, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, etc. So engineering itself links with science but impacts technology which itself impacts society itself. Now, since the 1950s and 60s, there have been histori historians and philosophers, there's been emerging fields of study in the history of science, the philosophy of science, just put these on on the internet, you'll get most of the premier world universities, University of Toronto, Princeton, MIT, Oxford, Cambridge, Imperial College, uh, University of Pennsylvania, many others, all have courses in their humanities departments on the history of science and the philosophy of science. The other big area, of course, is the history of technology and the philosophy of technology. And many of these institutes are called the Institutes for the History and Philosophy of Science and Technology. And engineering is perceived as a subset of history and philosophy of science and technology. And I believe engineering is such a powerful profession, body of knowledge, group of people, that it has profound impacts between science and technology and it needs to have its own domain and that's the reason for this course on history and philosophy of engineering. It equally stands equal to science and technology. One might think that this is being petty or pedantic but the fact is in the UK for example they have a chief scientific officer that comes from either physics background, biology, mathematics, etc. And perceived that engineering is an element of science. Well, of course it's not. And let me say right up front, engineering and the, the act and art of designing and building artifacts was around thousands of years before science, before a body of knowledge of science evolved. Newton's laws of motion didn't emerge until the 17th century. Now, of course, the Greeks did have some forms of science and lots of mathematics, but all the great Roman aqueducts and roads and baths did not have advanced mathematics and advanced science in order to calculate them. The, the science of thermodynamics was not there uh, to develop the steam engine or the internal combustion engine. So engineering sciences are really an emergence in the 19th, uh, 1800s, in the 19th century. Engineering as a, 
as a university subject that became worthy of university teaching only emerged in the 1800s, first in the US, but in Britain in the 1840s at Glasgow, and then in London. And so, and that was because of the, the, the development of science, electromagnetism, mechanics, statics, dynamics, etc., as a result of the scientific revolution of the 17th century. So let's forget this notion that engineering is an element of science, or that science drives engineering. Nothing could be further from the truth. Engineering has been around long before science became a body of knowledge. And it's, it's, it, it's important to know this because if we have scientists that are shaping policy, industrial policy, when they don't have any understanding of how industry works and how any understanding of how the artifacts that drive society work or are used, then we can often get the wrong policies. I'm not putting scientists down, these are wonderful people. But when it comes to policy making about how technology is used, where it's used, when it should be funded, it requires the mind of the engineer that understands the link between the science and how technology is used. So I just wanted to put that one to bed. Now, here are the themes that I'm going to be talking about under uh, why engineers have to go beyond technical, beyond, you know, technical thinking and technical subjects. So I'm going to talk about the following elements. I'm going to talk about the future work skills that engineers won't be required to have. I'm going to also explain why history and philosophy of engineering will be important to undermine and underwrite these work skills. Then I'm going to talk about the public image. What, why, why do we care about public image? Many engineers think the public image is useless, forget about it, forget about trying to shape it. But it has implications. For example, in the UK, young school children think engineers fix your fridges or washing machines. They have no concept that engineers actually design aircraft. And therefore, the recruitment in the engineering in universities in the UK has totally imploded. They're relying on foreign students. It's similar in the, U in the United States. It is a phenomenon of the English-speaking countries. It's one of the things we're going to explore. But public image matters because public image determines whether your point of view is taken serious or not and how you impact policy. Then we'll talk about recruitment. Why is it that in Western society, and this is focused mainly on Western society, English-speaking society mainly, with Europe as well. We'll talk about Europe, Italy, and the Latin countries. But why is recruitment important? As I've said, there, no one is taking up STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but particularly engineering is suffering. The average age of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers in the UK that I'm a member of is 58. 58 years old is the average age. And of course, what happens in 10 years' time, that skews to the right. So we're also going to have a history of technology focus. We're going to explore why technology is important and, why, and how it shapes society. We'll then look at why engineering has a current overly scientific approach. So this all sets the stage. This is setting the stage for the course. And then we'll look at technology and social change. Tech and social change. And finally, today we'll wrap up with the new kind of engineer. And there's been some articles written recently in various magazines. One of them is the Professional Engineers Ontario Engineering Dimensions magazine that calls for a Renaissance engineer. So that sets the stage. So let's go through each of these subjects.